Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, who graduated from Obafemi Ogunho University in Leife. Uh, and he said he was sorry I did not attend the university. I'm sorry you did not attend the most cosmopolitan university in the world, the University of Lagos. Uh, I also want to thank all the former presidents present. We are glad to see you, sir. We've done this for 49 years, uh, attending every conference of this powerful organization. You have done better than Nigeria. I don't think Nigeria has attended that many independent days. These days we don't even celebrate our independence anyways anymore. We are meeting at a crucial time in the life of this country because we are discussing healthcare. And why is it crucial? We are meeting at a time the president of the country has run away from this country. Because Please, let's take it very serious. Because we are meeting possibly presidents of this country in the future. And I'll be one of the presidents when I win who will assure you that any healthcare problem that Nigerian doctors and pharmacists cannot take care of, that problem better kill me. That is my promise to you today. I lived in the U.S. for 20 years. It doesn't matter how sick the U.S. president is. If they can't find a doctor that can treat him in the U.S., they'll bury him. But the case has been opposite for us. It's also crucial for you to understand that some other persons, presidential candidates, who should be here today are not here. Particularly, the ones that need your help. Yes. I'm serious. We all need your help, no doubt. But some people need your help more than the others. I don't want to mention names, uh, but I know some people are getting their prescriptions filled every day, and they need pharmacists, and they should have been here. They're not here. And I also want to commend you. Please, I want to commend you for doing a human's job in this country. Pharmacists in Nigeria are taking over the primary healthcare sector. You are everything rolled into one, and this is not a joke. If someone is sick, they probably trust pharmacists these days, and they trust anybody. And somebody mentioned that pharmacists are the most trusted people. I think they are also very clairvoyant. I will make a revelation here today. Please, don't be upset with me. When I heard about condom and I wanted to buy it, it took me five times going in and out of the pharmacist job. The man called me and said, You know what you want. I said, How did you know? He said, People like you are the ones who come in and out. They wrapped it in the brown bag, gave it to me, I paid and we left. Since then, he became the most trusted person I've ever met. Who think they are sick. Right? 
that is why your job is so important in our society and why I decided to come here today. I know most of you must have heard that I had a brother who was 49 years old, almost 50, and he went back to read pharmacy because he wanted to become a pharmacist. He was killed a year and a half ago. On his way back from uh, Iguinedo University, he was going to be there. And I promise, as part of his members, that I will be here today so that you know that even though it's not alive, the spirit is here with us. I also want to mention that we can stand in front of you and make huge promises. But one thing we must all admit is that Nigeria has failed us. Your president was saying here that over 6,000 pharmacists have left since, I think, the end of COVID crisis. Some 8,000 doctors have left. I can't, we can't count how many nurses have left. We must also thank those of you who have decided to stay back. Yes. Because some of you are not only farmers, some of you are university lecturers. You are going to be paid for eight months and you are still here. We must thank you. I met a professor who was doing protocol work today. Uh, he was helping us to sit down in the room. Inside my head, I'm saying this professor has changed his profession. Since they have been there with eight months, they have been put to It's a joke, Professor. So, what means all this lead us to? Uh, will be something that was attributed to a guy named Charles Morris de Talleyrand. He's a French diplomat. When Napoleon and Batman were abdicated in the show, and the Bourbon dynasty was returned to France. He said to them, you have learned nothing and forgotten nothing. He was referring to Nigeria, even though he wasn't talking about Nigeria, that regardless of what we have gone through in the healthcare sector, our leaders are so wicked, useless, I'm sorry to say this, that they refuse take care of healthcare, the healthcare sector, which is their most important need. This country has had a president die in office. For five months, our president was bringing there in South Africa. He did not announce to the country. You would think that the next presidents who are coming, who of course know that they are not too well, who are these big hospitals in this country, where, well, in case of emergency, it can be attended to. But as you know, they have learned nothing and they have forgotten nothing. You would think that political parties, in selecting candidates, will at least be sure that the ones they are giving us are not going to spend most of the time in hospitals and abroad by making sure that they put pressure on the candidates before to build hospitals. Pay healthcare professionals very well. They will never do that because they have left nothing and forgotten nothing. You would think that Nigeria or Nigerians too would pay attention to these issues by ensuring that when they vote, they vote for people, even when they are not sick, at least have the knowledge and consciousness of the need for healthcare in the country. But as you know, they have learned nothing and forgotten nothing. <laughs> we didn't think that those other candidates that I don't want to mention their name will be here today to discuss the pharmacists. Learn from them, hear from them. But as you know, they have learned nothing and forgotten nothing. You would think that Nigeria would think about governors in the healthcare sector. But guess who is the Minister of State for Health? A lawyer. Are we going to have a pharmacist become the Minister of Justice? No! It's the 
because Nigeria has left nothing, and because it will not have it. You would think that by now we will have a national health policy upgraded since 2016. It was never done. Even the PCN Act that was uh, recently signed by Buhari, he's doing this because probably somebody is trying to please somebody. Because they have not put governance structures in place to show that they had any respect for that particular law that was signed by the president. You would also think that Nigeria by now will have more than 0.07 pharmacies to 1,000 people. This cannot be said to be a sleep. It's a criminal decision by our leaders because they have no respect for our population. Out of the 177 countries, I mean, in the world, Nigeria is going 44 in terms of healthcare performance today. We have nothing that could be called healthcare, honestly. If not for you, sitting here, some doctors who are left, I mean, who are still left here with us, most of you who are here with us are also feeling your paperwork to leave anyways. <laughs> it doesn't have to come true. But we thank you regardless until your paperwork is approved. Stay with us. And you think that we will have serious decision in care in terms of health care financing. Nigeria has only spent 1% of its popular I mean, budget on health care. We are supposed to be doing 15%. That is the starting point. But I have said all this, and must also say that we need to upgrade, and you hear this all the time. Our healthcare, primary healthcare, our secondary healthcare, and tertiary healthcare centers. We are not doing that, and there is no plan in place to do it. And I know my time is running out, but I'm standing in front of you today, making this promise that when, because it's not a matter of if, we are taking a decision today according to the press. Anybody that did not come here today is not going to win the election. <laughs> so, this election is not between me and Chris and they were here. And the president of the, uh, the PSN uh, was talking about Pande Yam the other time. I think he will be on my side because his wife is from all those states. And you know what they say about us, all those state people are stubborn. So we will stop only to find the health sector. We will stop only to make sure that we are well paid. And those who are not employed are employed to work both in the public sector and the revived private sector. And that you too can be invited to the next organized private sector events that we are having. I discovered through a study I did today that there are 128 million Nigerians with bank accounts. Only 768,000 of them have up to 500,000 Naira in their accounts. That is 0.6% of account holders. And trust me, I'm a presidential candidate. I don't have 500,000 Naira in my account, but I'm talking to you now. And most of you don't have 500,000 Naira in your account, even as pharmacists. That is the truth. Because if you start at the team in the public civil service, probably you are getting a deposit of 120,000 or 140,000 Naira in your account. By the time you pay your rent, transportation, nothing is left. That is the reality you are facing. So, you are faced with poverty in the midst of trying to help other people. I know, as I have been told, that time is up. But I want to round up by saying that Nigeria is sick. And I will be sending you prescriptions to fix Nigeria. Please.